Welcome to Shep Rambles, where I am Shep and I tend to ramble about what? Anything and everything. And uh, Star Wars. <laughs> Just when you want to step away and take a break from it, an article like this comes out. Now, I see that I saw this. And I'm like, all right, we got to talk about this one. I'm uh, not completely. I mean, come on. I like Star Wars. All right. I mean, you know, I want it to be good, and I don't want to get off on a tangent because I tend to do that when I ramble. But there's just there's a lot going on right now with Star Wars, and I think people are just getting caught up way, 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 way in into it too much where I think people just need to take a break. And there's something about this article that really bothers me. And we'll get into it here. And maybe I'm right. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But that's why I have my rambling series. It's just me conveying my thoughts and my feelings about a variety of different types of things. That's it's a it's a vlog is what it is so you may agree with me you may not but you know what that's what makes life interesting right i mean if we all agreed on the same thing it would be a boring world so let's let's go on with this here all right so it says here want to know how maz kanada actually got luke's old light old blue lightsaber Curious to find out how J.J. Abrams is working to make Star Wars 9 the best sequel since Disney bought Lucasfilm. Interested in learning more about Rey, Finn, and Poe as their story comes to its ultimate close. Well, you come to the right place because we've got plenty of new information as production kicks off on the next installment of Star Wars. Okay, so right here in this first paragraph is where I'm starting to have some of the problems with. This first paragraph makes it sound like, oh, we got all the news that you've been looking for. But all this news is coming from one source, for the most part. At least that's the impression I got from this article. And I have a problem with that. It's like you're hearing, instead of sitting back and... Uh, I don't know, maybe just taking information from, it's just, it's coming from one source and it, it it's almost as if it's being, uh, I don't know, like funnel, it just, something just doesn't seem right. Anyway, um, What do I want to say on this here? There's something I wanted to say about... <laughs> about something in there. That's all right. We'll keep moving on. Um, so there hasn't been an official announcement from Disney and Lucasfilm, but it's being reported. Okay, at least this... At least this is kind of accurate. It's, it's being reported, and that could mean anything. I mean, people could just be making assumptions of what's happening and they're reporting it. Kind of makes you think about, you know, news channels these days where they supposedly report the news. Where actually they're just making it up. Anyway, uh, Star Wars 9 began shooting this week and already has a couple of days production under its belt. As the final sequel in the Force Awakens trilogy gets underway, some intel... It's slipping through the cracks. All right. Apparently some Intel chips are slipping through the cracks. Anyway, these are just rumors for now, but they come from legit sources. And as we've seen with the past two movies, these rumors usually come true. I don't believe that at all. 
because I saw some of the rumors before Last Jedi came out, and the movie that wound up coming out was a heck of a lot different from the stuff that I saw. Now, I wasn't caught up. I was and I was kind of caught up with, with the rumors before The Last Jedi because, hey, I was looking forward to Luke. Who wasn't? Who, I mean, what was the main thing everyone was looking forward to in Episode Eight? Luke Skywalker. I mean, I don't think they were looking forward to seeing Ray or Poe or, or Finn. Or, you know, I do think people were looking forward to Kylo. I think... Um, He's probably the most interesting character in in this uh, in this sequel trilogy, um, but I mean, let's be honest. Most people were looking forward to seeing Luke, um, and the type of stuff that I was led to believe that um, Star Wars: The Last Jedi was going to be was not. I was. I don't know if taken by surprise is the right word, but it definitely was not what I expected. And that's a good and a bad thing. And I have other videos where I've talked about this, so I'm not going to rehash all of that. But uh, it says here, the first bit of news deals with the return to a very familiar location. It was widely reported in early July that director J.J. Abrams would be taking his crew back to Cardington Airship Sheds in Bedfordshire, England. The location was first seen during the climatic ending of A New Hope and served as home base to the Rebels. The Cardington Airship Sheds, try saying that like 10, 20 times fast, were used to construct the Masasi Outposts. I say that word that many times. Masasi, 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 masasi. AKA Base One on the planet Yavin 4. And it was also seen in the more recent Rogue One. Now we may know what is being shot here for Star Wars 9. So I think that's interesting. The final Force Awakens chapter will bring Rey, Finn, and Poe together for some adventure time, which we haven't really seen in the last two movies. I agree. That probably would be a good thing. I mean, there you have the chemistry between Luke, Han, and Leia. And I don't think we've seen that chemistry with, with the new characters. And that's a shame because it's being done on the last movie. And it's kind of like, shouldn't we have built this up to start with? That's not necessarily a bad thing. Sometimes you got characters that are kind of their own... Uh, their own thing and then they kind of come together towards the end the first the first show that I think of is Heroes uh, the TV show which the first season was just fantastic I loved it but you had each of these different characters that wound, wound up meeting each other and coming together towards the real end during, during a, a climatic finale and this could be along the same lines. Um, the trio uh, will be on Yavin 4 when it's attacked. By whom? We can only assume the First Order. Well, you think? Um, <laughs> who knows? Maybe it'll be the Knights of Ren. Mike Zero has been collecting info on the movie since it began production and says this. Okay, so he goes on about this big chase scene. Now this is where I'm starting to have some more trouble is that they're making this out like Mike Zero is the primary source of information when it comes to Star Wars, but just him. There's nothing in here that suggests that, oh, uh, these people are having, you know, they're reporting on this, they're reporting on that. There's like a collection of information com from, coming from different sources, but no, it's coming from one particular source how credible is that source now i'm not saying anything against mike zero or anything i've seen some of his videos not all of them um and he's seen and he seems uh what i like about him is he's not he's not um <laughs> like on some videos that i see and not not necessarily star wars but 
there are some videos where people are just overly excited, almost as if they fake their excitement. Like, oh my, I can't believe this is happening. Oh, this is so awesome. I mean, reaction videos is kind of like where, what I think of uh, when I see something like that. Um, so I don't see him doing that. I don't see him like, oh, I can't believe this is happening. Yay. Um, but on the other side, I don't see him getting all furious. Like there are some channels that you got some channels that are like overly emotional in this. Uh, oh, this is great. I can't believe this. And then you've got other channels that are just full of anger and and uh, distaste of what's going on. And Mike Zero's right in the middle. He um, he pretty much just keeps. Uh, it's like he keeps his emotions in check. Like he doesn't he doesn't try to go one way or the other. It kind of stays right in the middle. So that is one thing that I do like about him. Um, but what I have a problem with is that it seems like all of this information is just being funneled through him and just him. And I don't, I, I don't like it when there's only one source of information. Um, I get suspicious and maybe that's just my old age. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I'm just not with the times. Uh, that's fine. But uh, I don't know. Experience has told me that when you get information from what just one source, uh, it can be misinformation. But, you know, hey, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, anyway, we'll, we'll skip this whole thing here. Um, it's suspected that this scene is a big attack on Yavin 4. The Resistance returns there to plan their next attack on the First Order, but Kylo Ren and General Hux have been tipped off and carried out a full-blown assault from the Rebels. Uh, before the Rebels can get in the air, uh, while Star Wars 9 won't be blowing up the Falcon, it's assumed that this sequel will destroy one of the more iconic locations from the franchise, leaving it a burnout husk in galaxies long. You know, when I think of Yavin 4, I really don't think of it as an iconic location. Tatooine is an iconic location, I think. Um, I think Hoff is an iconic location. Yavin 4? I don't know. I never really saw Yavin 4 as an iconic location. It just... I mean, yeah, it was... I guess it was a thing in the original Star Wars. But and for those of you, that's episode 4. I, I, like I said, I'm I'm old. To me, Star Wars is Episode Four. <laughs> um, but I didn't think it was that big of a deal. I thought you know Tatooine was iconic, Hoth was iconic, Endor was iconic. If we go back to the prequels, uh, Coruscant, 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 whatever however, however it's pronounced, that to me is iconic. Naboo is iconic. Yavin 4, it just seemed like, it's kind of like Denny's, <laughs> you know, it's like, we just happen to be going there, it just happens to be a planet that we're going to, it, you know, it, it, where do you go when you have nothing else to do, well, you go to Denny's, I guess, <laughs> that to me is what Yavin 4 is, I just, I didn't see it as that big of a deal, yeah, it had the rebel base on it, but, ah, I don't know. It just seemed just, it just I don't know. It just didn't seem that iconic to me. I guess maybe it was because you know that's where the base was at, and the Death Star was going to blow it up, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I don't know. Um. All right, and then. Star Wars will have a lot of prequel and orig original trilogy connections and continuity. I've seen rumors on that. And then J.J. Abrams knows a lot of fans didn't like The Last Jedi, and it's his mission to make the sequel the best one yet, and he's really got to knock it out of the park. And the rumors that Disney and Lucasfilm brought in George Lucas to consult on the script. While they pretty much turned their back on him, 
when The Force Awakens was first coming together. He's become like this trilogy's Obi-Wan Kenobi. Uh, imagine Kathleen Kennedy calling out to him as their only hope. Now here is a paragraph with a whole bunch of issues that I've got here. Um, one is this thing about J.J. Abrams knows a lot of fans didn't like The Last Jedi. It's been said time and again that the movie has split the fan base right down the middle. I, I don't think you could say that the majority of people hated The Last Jedi. Certainly a lot of people hated The Last Jedi, but there's a lot of people that did like it too. Um, when, I mean, check, check this out. Let's go to Amazon for real quick. And, oh, I thought there was going to be a search thing here. Okay, that was weird. That didn't work. <laughs> Try it again. Ah, I don't want Prime. I want... Where the heck's the main site? Ah, crap. I'll just type in Amazon.com. <laughs> All right. So let's take a look at... Last Jedi. Now take a look at these ratings here. You got three and a half, maybe kind of close to four stars. All right, and and like out out of how many? Like three thousand five hundred and fifty-four. Okay, so, and then you've got you know you've got your sites like. Um, Rotten Tomatoes, where, you know, you got a lot of uh, more uh, more reviews there that don't, don't like it. So to say that most people didn't like the movie, I don't think is accurate. I think it's split down the middle, honestly. You got people who really liked it. You got people who didn't like it. And I think you got people that were just kind of like, meh, it was all right. You know, just didn't, they didn't like it. They didn't hate it. You know, it was just right down the middle um if you since last jedi is on netflix if you take a look at uh netflix you will see the same thing there's uh it's got a pretty you know it's an over average you know higher than average rating for the movie so i don't know that's one thing that i have a problem with here i don't think Uh, there's been other uh, article, not articles, but other videos to saying that, oh well, people's response on the Last Jedi is, is not going to uh, influence J.J. Abrams to change his mind on what he's going to do, and or or Disney, like they're they're gonna move right on ahead. You know, according to them, there's nothing wrong with the Last Jedi. And now they're saying, oh, well, no one really likes it. He's going to change it, et cetera, et cetera. It, it just, it goes back and forth. And it's his mission to make this sequel the best one yet. Well, why wouldn't you? Isn't the goal of making a movie to try to make it as good as you possibly can? Or do you just kind of make a movie just to make a movie? Now, I know what your answer is going to be on this. <laughs> there are movies that are just kind of made just to basically cash in on something real quick and then you throw it away. So, yeah. But, I mean, with something like Star Wars, I mean, yeah, you want to kind of make it as good as you possibly can. But what we've been seeing, in my opinion, is not something that will stand the test of time. You know, you kind of watch it. It's kind of like, yeah, well, that was fun. I don't know if I'd see it again, but it was fun. Um, but, so that one just seems... I've been told I read into things too much. Yeah, I probably do. But, 
Um, sorry, had a little bit of a distraction. Um, anyway, uh, the other thing that I've got here is the thing with George Lucas. Now, I can see him being a consultant on the script, but my thing is, what motivation does George Lucas have to want to, I mean, we know what the story is that he wanted to tell because he wanted to go into this uh, microbiotic world um, for the sequel trilogy to really explore the force itself and how it works, which I thought would have been really interesting. Um, and that didn't happen. What we got was kind of like a rehash of what we already had. I mean, episode seven was just a rehash of what we've already had in the past. Um, so with that in mind, I mean, let's be honest, seven, eight, and nine are not the type of story that he would have, he would have told. He would have told something different. So why, what, I don't know, to me, what motivation does George Lucas have to consult on the script? To save Star Wars? I mean, yeah, he created Star Wars, but he sold it. He sold it because I figured he wanted to step away from it. Because people were giving him, you know, a hard time about the prequels. Yada, yada, yada. And, um... So, I mean, they make it... The way this is sounding, it's almost as if, oh, George, and, and, and the videos, for that matter, oh, George Lucas is going to have this big part to play um, in Star Wars 9, and it's going to help shape it, and uh, all this other stuff. And I really don't think that's going to be the case. I think Lucas will probably, you know, probably be along the you know lines of maybe a few things. It's like, yeah, well, maybe you could do this, or maybe you could do that. But honestly, it's like... It's like someone doing, like, the most crappiest movie you could possibly think of um, that wouldn't interest you. And then they come to you and say, hey, uh, could you give us some ideas on what we could do with this script? You kind of like look at it and you're like, man, this kind of sucks, but okay. <laughs> I don't know. That just, it's what it seems like to me that, you know, it, I, I think this rumor is bl being blown way out of proportion because there, you know, there are people like, oh, now he's the savior. Yay. And some people don't care, but. And it kind of goes in that George Lucas has been pretty silent since Disney began to reboot the franchise. Well, of course he was. Of course he's been silent. He's smart. He ain't stupid. <laughs> he's like, I'm going to sit back. I'm going to let whatever happens, happens. And, uh, you know, and if he doesn't agree with what's happening, it's like, I told you guys, you know, I gave him material you could work with. So whatever you're doing, you, you're you doing it. He's been very, I think he's been very respectful. But he's also been very careful in what he says. So, and like I said, I, I, can, I tend to read into things a little bit. With episode seven, he was saying, oh, the fans will like it. Does that sound like he liked the movie? <laughs> I'm sure he thought it was a fun movie to see. But that to me says, well, that's not what I had in mind. Episode 8, he said, was a beautifully shot film. It was. S uh, when you look at the cinematography, it was a very stunning film visually. And I don't mean special effects, but... There was a lot 
there's a lot of eye candy in it. Uh, a lot of very interesting uh, things to see. But that's all that he said. And so, right there. So we can tell that George Lucas did not like Episode 7, did not like Episode 8. Um, if I remember correctly, he did come out and say specifically with Rogue One that he really enjoyed it. And so you're seeing, he didn't say that with Force Awakens or Last Jedi. He didn't say, oh yeah, I really liked it, I really enjoyed it. He just said, oh, the fans will like it, or it was beautifully shot. <laughs> I don't know. You take from that what you want. But to me, that tells me that Rogue One was more closer to the idea of Star Wars, whereas Episode 7 and 8 is nothing like he would have done. So why, if 7 and 8 were not what he wanted to do, why would he get involved with 9? Maybe if it was the start of a whole new trilogy, but this is like the last movie in the trilogy. And the first two movies are nothing like he wants, so... I don't know. It just... just seems... It doesn't add up. It doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, and now there's this thing about Star Wars 9 would begin with a huge time jump from The Last Jedi. Well, that kind of makes sense. I mean, how can you possibly start right after The Last Jedi? I mean, there's the Resistance. There's nothing left. Um, and then you have the kid at the end that uses the Force to pick up the broom. It would, it would seem to me that... I mean, to me, Episode Eight felt like the end of the trilogy and not a middle movie. So with that in mind you would have to take the last movie and push it ahead ahead, ahead in time. Um, too many distractions. But anyway, there's the talk about the rework of General Leia scenes. And of course, there's news going back and forth of is she going to be recast and or is... Is her uh, death going to be played into the story somehow? Who knows? Um, then we're talking about, oh, Finn's going to have a whole new outfit, and his hair is going to be longer, and Ray's going to get a new lightsaber, and Kylo Ren's going to have a new look, and blah, 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 blah. Who cares? It's like saying, oh, Poe is going to have new shoes he's going to be wearing in episode 9. It's big news. Who cares? Who freaking cares? Poe would be getting a new flight suit. Who cares? Really? We're going to make a huge deal about someone's flight suit? <laughs> Why is that news? <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> The look has yet to be described, but it should surprise fans of the series. Uh, uh, for Ray, she's going to get a completely new look. Like, I don't know, like what, her hair is not going to be tied back? It's going to be out? She's going to cut her hair short? She's going to what, dye it pink, purple? I mean, it, it should surprise fans of the... I, who cares? I, I don't see how any... I don't know, some of this stuff just, like I said, it's being blown way out of proportion, I think. Though this is different. Ray is getting a maxi make makeover. Uh, she's getting a maxi pad makeover. And we can't wait to see it. Uh, uh, maybe I'm just getting old. Anyway, <laughs> now the most interesting rumor to come out since shooting is that Maz Kanata will have a pretty big role to play in the movie. Well... That seems like common sense. She had a small role in what I thought was a small role in episode 7. And then episode 8 was like uh, more like a cameo appearance. So, yeah, I mean, you would have to have something with her. 
And then there was how it links into Lando. And then they refer to Lando as Pando Lando, which is getting me to really question the sincerity of this, this article. Um, when you start describing Lando that way. And his animal urges. I mean, when I got to this point of the article, I started to really question the... Um, the credibility of it because it, it was it was interesting until you got to this point and now and now it's beginning to read like oh there's all these rumors out but this movie's still gonna suck because of this instead of it just being again this is another thing that i like about mike zero i'm not hating on the guy or anything like that but i don't remember him saying anything about you know making fun of Londo and saying that he is love has animal urge you know all this other stuff I don't remember him saying anything like that I don't watch all of his videos but he just kind of reports stuff now where he's getting this information I don't know does he make it up I mean it seems like a lot of videos that he's coming up with is kind of like Let's discuss good or bad or, um, you know, the big debate, stuff like that. Um, there really isn't any news to talk about, but he always he seems to have, it's always like he's trying to stir the pot. It's kind of like, oh, we got a whole bunch of fans here. Let's stir the pot up a little bit and let's see if we can get them to... Um, argue some more and i think i read the comments more from mike zero's site than anything or his videos and it's kind of the same thing over and over again i'm not gonna see episode nine star wars is dead for me um ray is so perfect oh yada 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 it's all like it's the same real it's a it's like the same you could almost copy and paste the comments from one video to another <laughs> just about because it seems like it's the same thing video after video after video which has got me to the point was like what's the purpose of all these videos in the first place it's just it's a broken record it just skips um all right so there's this whole thing about lando about that's how he got his lightsaber back. I thought, I thought, uh, Bespin was a gas planet. Well, I guess that's not necessarily true. How could it be a gas planet if Luke fell out, uh, after losing his hand? He wouldn't be able to breathe. But I never got the impression that there was actually a surface to the planet that it was just mainly air that was impression that was why because why it's called cloud city was because there's no place to build on top of it it's just that's why they have floating cities that was uh, that's what i thought bespin was i didn't think it actually had a surface but i don't know anyway um then there's the thing about the there's a Lego release on Maz's castle and Lando's hanging out with it, so there's gotta be a connection there. Um and then it's just kinda like, oh, we expect to have more rumors coming out about episode nine, and then there's a link here to leaked details and more. Seems to be a common theme with Mike Zero. He likes to put and more at the end of all of his stuff. Um, like Star Wars, uh, episode, episode nine, new flight suit and more. Um, <laughs> uh, Star Wars episode nine, Ray brushes her teeth and more. So, I mean, I could go on, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I don't know about this whole thing. I just, I saw this article and I just, I had to say something about it. Maybe you agree with me. Maybe you don't. I mean, that's to be expected. 
and that's why I have the comments section in the video um, you know it's it's for us to sit here and have a conversation it's it's hey tell me what you think I'm, I'm interested in what you think I'm not going to disable the comments um, not, not like some site you know not some sites some well I guess there are sites that do that but some videos they just they don't want to hear anyone's opinion well that's not the case with me I want to hear what you guys think I, I honestly want to hear what you think I mean do you think this is all credible I mean if all these rumors are true or if most of them is true what's the motivation for going to see episode 9 it's like someone you know grabbing a book and telling you all the great things about the book and you never had a chance to read it for yourself and it's like oh well why do i need to watch it now or how like in some movies they'll show a trailer for that movie and it's like they've either shown the best parts of it or they've pretty much told you what the whole plot was <laughs> what's the point of seeing the movie then um so that's why I I just have a problem with it because I think people are just getting caught up in this and I think they need to step away and take a break um, I think that would be a good thing I had to step away and take a break from it and I have I mean I I do other things on my rambling series than than just this and for that matter I do a lot more stuff on this channel than just this I've got gaming videos um, I have a machinima slash gameplay slash documentary thing about Star Trek Online, which I've been having fun with. I think most of my work has been going, uh, most of my editing work has been going towards that, um, cause that one takes me the most time to actually work with. Um, I've got my rambling series, which is pretty much a vlog on whatever I happen to think of at the time. It's really all this is. Um, there's the gaming videos. Um, and I also have a series um, inspired from all of this ridiculous Star Wars stuff um, of this sim that I created uh, with The Sims 4. His name is Nero. It just happened to be because it I was doing a gameplay of of the Sims 4 and this character that came up was the first one that came up on the screen and I'm like perfect <laughs> I went with it and I just called him Nero the hero because his aspiration was to pretty much be liked by everyone he wanted to make friends with everyone he meets so kind of like a hero in some saying you know things like oh we all like you you're kind of like our heroes type of thing and i decided to use him to do this series of nero's new order of star wars and where he's just reporting star wars news but i'm making it blatantly obvious that the news is made up i mean all of the all of the episodes uh, that he has on this Star Wars stuff none of it's true some of it is sort of true but just twisted <laughs> but you should be able I mean if you were to look at the series and I have a playlist of them if you were to look at the series it should be pretty obvious that they're made up if you if you look at it um, I don't know if anyone is actually watching it or if they're just looking at the uh, thumbnail of it. I, they are getting views. Not all of them, <laughs> but some of them are getting views. So I'm hoping that if they once they go into it and they see that there's this computer generated sim that's giving the news that they can't take it all that seriously. Um, it's basically, it's just a parody of everything that's going on right now. It doesn't matter what channel it is. It doesn't matter what website it is. Um, it's just a parody of everything. And it's just, I don't know. I have fun with it. If anything, all of this Star Wars news just inspires me to come up with something more crazier. Uh, just have fun with it. It's, 
it, it's just it's silly it's stupid and you know it, it's just a it's just a fun thing that I just put together I'm not really expecting anything out of it if people like it and they find it you know entertaining cool um, I, I, I can tell you that Nero is is a character all on his own <laughs> if you watch the Sims 4 series uh, game gameplay series that I've got featuring Nero um, you'll see that he's like he's like his own thing he's he's his own character <laughs> um, and I want and I plan to do more with that so uh, one thing I'd like to do is like a like a like a sketch comedy uh, machinima uh, type of thing featuring him and uh, people that he meets and just kind of just kind of doing so I've, I've been wanting I, I've been wanting to put more on this channel than just gameplays and stuff like that I've been wanting to actually put um, like some comedy some animation stuff like that it's over the years I just haven't had time but um, I'm at a point in my life now where I can actually start doing more of the stuff that I wanted to do as far as videos and stuff so so that's that's just something but anyway um, I can't really think of anything else to talk about uh, in regards to this article so if you made it this far in the video <laughs> congratulations um, I do tend to ramble that's why I call this Shep Rambles um, but I'm glad that you stuck with me and you watched it uh, one thing that I don't do is I don't sit there and do jump cuts with what I say uh, um, you know, people cut out, they're like, they, they make all these jump cuts in their video because they're cutting out spaces um, in between sentences. Um, yeah, it, it just annoys me when I see that. Uh, and I don't use a script. I, um, the only things I would use a script on, uh, like for example, the, the Nero series, I use a script, um, obviously, because I, I want to keep it focused on something um, but as far as the rambling series well, it's called rambling it's not called Shep's script it's called Shep rambles and it's just I'm just I, I just I I just talk I just talk to you guys is, is all it is it's as if it's as if you're there I'm here and we're just talking that, that's 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 really all, all it is um, so I don't sit there and cut things out. Um, you know, the only time that I'll make a cut in my video is if there's a distraction of some kind. Um, like there is a couple of distractions. But anyway, well, I got way off on a, off on a tangent there. But anyway, if you made it this far in the video, um, cool. You know, thanks for hanging with me. Don't be afraid to leave something in the comments. All right. I'm like I said. I'm interested in what you got, what what you what you think, and what you got to say. You know, whether you agree with me or whether you don't, that's okay. We can still talk. We can still communicate. And that's 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 the fun part of it, I think. But I'll go ahead and I'll leave it there. Um, and I'm sure I'll have many more things talk about other than Star Wars I've got tons of ideas of stuff that I wanted to do videos on as far as far as this series is concerned and will we go back and talk about Star Wars probably um, again I want to just take a step away from it so I'll wait until there's something big to talk about this is like a consolidation of stuff. So I thought this was like, uh, it was like the ideal thing to talk about. But anyway, that's it. <laughs> that's all I got. All right. So thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. And I will see you on the next rambling video.
Did that seem like a lot of rambling to you? Well, I'm not sure what you expected from a show that has rambling in the name, but that's okay. I do have other videos, some of which I don't ramble as much. I make new videos all the time on a variety of different subjects, so click subscribe to get notified when they're uploaded. Thanks for hanging with me, and I'll see you again soon.